Thank you. All right. Good afternoon, God's people. 
thank you for coming back. <laughs> it's good to see you all again. And we're grateful to those of you who are joining us online to worship with us. We know that we have folks from University Christian Church in Austin, Texas. Thank you for loaning us the Reverend uh, Megan uh, Ammon Pegler this afternoon uh, and for this week as she's here in Denver to enjoy the Festival of Homiletics, which for those of you who are not preaching nerds is homiletics is the study of preaching. Yes, there's a whole festival this weekend in Denver. Yes, the Episcopalians know know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, oh, so do the Methodists, I've been assured. All right, very good. We have all in attendance today, and we are so grateful. Um, Heart of the Rockies Christian Church welcomes into membership, full participation and leadership, all persons, regardless of race, ethnicity, gender identity and expression, sexual orientation, age, economic status, physical or mental ability, familial status, and faith history. What we mean is you are welcome here. We are delighted um, to welcome some special guests with us this afternoon who have traveled after their own morning worship services uh, or who are coming ahead of their own evening worship services to be with us to celebrate this covenant that we make between Heart of the Rockies Christian Church, our new pastor, Wendy Davidson, and God. And so if you are here as a clergy person, I would invite you to stand. Thank you. John Case is serving as a minister at Metropolitan Community Church, uh, Family in Christ here in Fort Collins. Uh, Ari Smith is the pastor at First Christian Church in Cheyenne, Wyoming. Kimberly Salik O'Deal is the pastor at the American Baptist Church in Fort Collins. The Reverend Joanne Bell Haynes is our Executive Regional Minister for the Central Rocky Mountain Region. Uh, Megan Ammon Pegler is the Senior Minister at University Christian Church in Austin, Texas, and a mentor and a friend of Wendy. Uh, and Michael Stein uh, serves as the Senior Minister at First Christian Church right down the road in Loveland. Did I get you all? Okay, from where I can see, thank you. We're delighted to welcome you here. This is to say nothing of the retired clergy in the room, the soon-to-be clergy in the room, um, and all the rest of you as well. We're really glad, glad that you're here. Um, if you've ever been to a Younger at Heart gathering, you know this game I like to play where I tell you how you're connected, even if you don't know that you're connected. And so fun fact, uh, Megan and Joanne and I have all served Community Christian Church in Kansas City. Uh, not at the same time, <laughs> um, but, but we share that in common and are grateful for this opportunity to lead you all in worship today. There will be a reception to follow, so we invite you to stay for that. Uh, there will be communion served during this service. All are welcome at Christ's table. That's part of how we understand our worship. It's how we understand our theology. It's who we are as disciples. And if you're worshiping with us at home, we invite you to take a moment and to prepare your own elements uh, as we'll bless those as part of our service as well. Uh, when you come forward to receive communion, um, you will do so um, by one of three stations. Uh, the two outer stations will have pre-prepared, uh, excuse me, will be individually prepared communion with gluten-free wafers and grape juice. The center station will have uh, pre-packaged communion. Most of the ones in the center are gluten-free, the ones on the outside are not but they do all have grape juice in them. I'm trying to think, oh, restrooms out the door and to your left. Did I mention I'm really grateful you're here? This is a really special day in the life of our congregation. You'll hear throughout the service how we have prayed for and prepared for this day. Um, you'll hear the covenants that we will make with one another, um, trusting in a God who is good um, and who has a future for us with hope. So again, thank you for your presence here today, for bearing witness to the work that God is doing in us and through us. And thank you to our search team. 
um, for the work that they have done to prepare for this service. But long before this service, the work that they have done to get us to this day. If you are on our pastoral search team, would you also please stand? <laughs> in good news, they have lots of confidence in themselves. So even if you, even if you didn't thank them, they would still be applauding. <laughs> I'm going to choose one of you who stood. To give, that's true. I was already standing. Um, but I am going to... Oh. <laughs> this is pretty much how every meeting went. So it's been a very long year plus of our lives. Um, I'm going to choose one of you who stood to do our call to worship. And I choose Cass. Logos by Mary Oliver. Why worry about the loaves and the fishes? If you say the right words, the wine expands. If you say them with love and the felt ferocity of that love and the felt necessity of that love, the fish explode into many. Imagine him speaking and don't worry about what is reality, or what is plain, or what is mysterious. If you are there, it was all those things. If you can imagine it, it is all those things. Eat, drink, be happy, accept the miracle. Accept to each spoken word spoken with love. Please stand as you are able and join us. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Holy God, thank you for your presence in this place. In our time together this afternoon, may your people at Heart of the Rockies Christian Church and the entire body of Christ bear witness to your wisdom, your justice, your comfort, your peace, your hope, and your grace. 
be with us as this church and community celebrates the start of our ministry with our new pastor and colleague and awesome, cool human being, Pastor Wendy Davidson. As you feed us, teach us to feed one another and feed your world. As you walk with us, teach us to walk with one another and walk with your world. As you have loved us, teach us to love one another and love your world. Fill us with your Holy Spirit today and guide us in being your people together. This we pray with awe, wonder, anticipation, and even a little fear and trembling. The words Jesus taught us saying, our creator, mother and father of us all, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. Our scripture reading for this afternoon is the only miracle Jesus performed that appears in all four Gospels. It's a story that is clearly central to who people believe Jesus was and what he valued. It's also a story that is central to our identity as disciples and to our understanding of how we are in relationship with God and with each other. A reading from Luke chapter 9, verses 10 through 17, New Revised Standard Version. On the return, the apostles told Jesus all they had done. Then taking them along, he slipped quietly into a town called Bethsaida. When the crowds found out about it, they followed him, and he welcomed them. He spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who need to be cured. The day was drawing to a close, and the twelve came to him and said, Send the crowd away so that they may go into the surrounding villages and countryside to lodge and get provisions, for we are here in a deserted place. But he said to them, You give them something to eat. They said, we have no more than five loaves and two fish, unless we are to go buy food for all these people. There were about 5,000 men. And he said to his disciples, have them sit down in groups of about 50 each. They did so, and he had them all sit down. Then taking the five loaves and two fish, he walked up to heaven, blessed and broke them, and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. All ate and were filled and what was left over was gathered up, 12 baskets of broken pieces. Hi, 
Church, woo, <laughs> my mic is on. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, pour out your spirit on us this day that we'll hear the word you have for us and celebrate as you would have us celebrate. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you so much for having me here. It's an honor and a privilege um, to share in this day. The Spirit has a way of bringing people together, as Melissa already shared. There's the overlap of folks who have served at Community Christian in Kansas City. Um, I actually followed Melissa there um, right after her time as a resident at the church was finished. My time was beginning, and that was when I left Wendy's Childhood Church. I was her youth minister for four and a half years, and now I happen to be the senior minister at the sponsoring congregation for her ordination. So, the spirit has a way, doesn't it? It is an exciting day in the life of this church, and your reputation precedes you. I don't know if y'all are aware of how highly respected you are and how inspiring you are. There are churches in Austin, where I am, who are talking about your efforts with Heartside Hill, inspired by that good, good work. And I don't know about this part of your reputation, but since you are a good Disciples Church, I figure that you put on a pretty good fellowship meal. If the snacks after church this morning were any indication, you do a wonderful meal. I am really looking forward to the reception after the service. I hear there's cake. <laughs> it's no surprise that Wendy chose this passage from the Gospel of Luke as the scripture for today's service. Luke, as a writer, was a pastoral theologian who offered assurance to a community that found itself in uncertain times. Wendy is a pastoral theologian. She is sensitive and compassionate and brilliant. She thinks through and wrestles with hard questions, unafraid of the struggle, and sure that there will be a blessing at the end. She has a deep knowledge of and love for scripture that began with conversations with her family. And don't we have similar conversations at church? Conversations that challenge us and comfort us and reassure us. Conversations that transform us. Together, we wrestle with questions of faith. We find ourselves learning and listening. As I think I might have already said, I met Wendy when I was the youth minister at her church. She was actually in fifth grade when I first met her. I was a student at TCU uh, and had the privilege of seeing her um, from that young age. And she was already um, a wise old soul <laughs> at that point. I know that won't surprise any of you who served on the search committee who have gotten to know her pretty well by this point. I remember my first impression of Wendy was that she was kind of quiet. I could tell that she was taking everything in. And she was the youngest youth group member who went on the mission trip that summer. And I have to tell you, I was looking through old photos from that trip as I was remembering things, writing this sermon, and found this great photo. I'll have to send it to you later. <laughs> I should have sent it to you ahead of time so we could put it up there. Um, we were working at Inman Christian Center in San Antonio, and she has this huge broom. It's like bigger than she was, and she's sweeping so hard. <laughs> she has this look of determination on her face. End of fifth grade, what, you're 11? 
she was working so hard because she was full of love for God and neighbor. Wendy has also always had a calm and joyful presence, deeply faithful from a young age. And over the years, I have been blessed to share with her at many different tables, youth group meals, fellowship lunches after church, s'mores at camp. And then another time of overlap was I actually worked at Bright Divinity School when she was still a student there. And so we got to share together in those tables on Tuesdays after chapel. And so thinking about all of those times of fellowship that Wendy and I have shared, and then looking at today's scripture, I started thinking about all of the ingredients of a good table fellowship, and particularly the ones that we see in this scripture from Luke 9. Oddly enough, in this list of ingredients you need for good table fellowship, you don't actually need a table. <laughs> There's no table in this passage. First, you need a crowd. In verse 11, it says that the crowds followed Jesus to Bethsaida and he welcomed them and spoke to them about the kingdom of God and healed those who needed to be cured. You have to have people to have a fellowship meal, right? There is such good, rich community within these walls and outside of it. This church is well known for being an excellent community partner. And as Wendy begins her ministry here, together you will continue to engage with and be an important member of this community. Another ingredient that you need is disciples. Even disciples who don't always get it, like the ones we heard about today, the ones who think that the answer is to send the crowd away because what can you do with five loaves and two fish? Not much, right? Even when we mess up, even when we don't get it, we are companions to each other along the way. People with whom to break bread and learn to better walk in the way of Jesus. We disciples help remind each other that when there's someone who is hungry, the answer isn't to say that some folks don't get food or these people get food first. We know and we remind each other that Jesus tells us to give them something to eat. In the days and months ahead, together, church, you will continue to learn and grow in faith. You will listen to the voice of God and each other's stories. You will love and serve as disciples in the name of Christ. Another ingredient you need for a meal, and this one is not surprising, is some food. <laughs> Even just a little bit of it. And I'm thinking about food as the basic building blocks for life. Basic building blocks with which God will do amazing things, astounding things that we couldn't even imagine. With some loaves and some fish and some trust and some prayer, we can't even imagine what God will do. There is some great hiking in these parts, I hear. I haven't gotten to do any of it myself yet. But I have gone hiking elsewhere, and I know that sometimes you'll come across a trail that isn't so well maintained. You really want it to be because it looks really cool over there. And sometimes it's like that with discernment. We have these basic building blocks, but we're really not sure how they're going to come together. 
The trail is messy. We don't know how we'll get from here to there. In Wendy's search and call papers, she wrote a little bit about how it can be hard to see where the Spirit is leading us. To quote her directly, <laughs> she says, however, I see, I can see the ground in front of my feet. And so I will continue to take the next step and the next trusting God to lead me wherever I may go. If I take a wrong turn off onto a game trail instead of the main trail, then I will backtrack and find my way again. The journey will take as long as it takes. The future will still be there. Together, you will take these basic building blocks, some loaves and fish. You will take what you have, and with God, you will do amazing things. Together, you will be on this journey trusting that the Holy One is as close as your very breath, assured by the presence of Christ, ready to use what you have to follow the call of God. Another ingredient that you need for this good fellowship is blessing. Jesus took the five loaves and the two fish, looked up to heaven and blessed and broke them and gave them to the disciples to set before the crowd. And Jesus says to us, you give them something to eat. You give them something to eat. And then, because we are human, even if we protest or we grumble or we think it's not possible, Jesus blesses what we have and equips us to feed those who are hungry. Together, church, you will be blessed and then you will go out to bless. You will keep on doing justice, loving mercy, and walking humbly with God. You will hear the call of Jesus to, call for, to care for the least of these and welcome all to God's table because there is more than enough to go around. And that brings us to our final ingredient of this particular recipe, baskets. 12 baskets of broken pieces were gathered up of what was left over. Astounding what God can do, astounding. And it's also so simple, take, bless, break, give. Then you gather up the surplus and you take, bless, break, give. You keep on spreading it out, sharing with anyone and everyone. And together, church, you will give them something to eat. Sharing food with the hungry, giving shelter to those without it, literally, visiting the sick and the imprisoned, you'll share life together, life abundant. And I'm gonna quote Wendy again, which might make you a little uncomfortable. <laughs> but when she described her vision of abundant life in her search and call papers, she said, it's going to a middle schooler's play, eating dinner with an older couple, visiting the hospital room of a high schooler who's been there for a while, answering the phone after a difficult diagnosis. She says, what a gift it is to share life together. What a gift it is to be present during times of greatest joy and times of deepest heartache. This is what it means to be church together. Amen. Amen. Today, we celebrate all of the ingredients of good table fellowship together to create the most delicious meal. We celebrate Wendy's call to this place and all the ways you will be church together. All the tables you'll gather around 
for bread and fish and conversation and service. We celebrate today how God nourishes our bodies and souls and gives us companions along the way. Bless you, Wendy Davidson. Bless you, Heart of the Rockies Christian Church. May you enjoy many meals, many days, many years together around tables that are full of good, good food, tables that are ever expanding, crowded tables where everyone belongs.
Hello, everyone. Um, Heart of the Rockies Christian Church, through prayer and discernment, guided by the Holy Spirit and the wise counsel of the Central Rocky Mountain region, has called Wendy Davidson as associate minister. We started on this journey over a year ago in early 2021. We created our pre-search team to define exactly what we were looking for in our new associate minister. That team became our search team, who over hundreds of hours and dozens of meetings <laughs> completed all the documentation about who we are and what we were looking for, reviewed countless candidate profiles, narrowed down the list to some possible candidates that were interviewed remotely, and selected a subset that came to Fort Collins for in-person visits and more interviews, leading to recommending Wendy to the congregation, who then voted to call our next associate minister. A huge thank you to the search team, led by Joanne Johnson, <laughs> with, with David Hartley, Aaron Iverson, Caitlin Miss Kelly, Daniel Mitchell, Cassie Poncelo, Bill Stout, Lynette Thayer, and our pastor, Melissa Sinclair, ex officio, for all the work they did to get us to today. And Christine. <laughs> <sighs> Wendy Marie. Davidson, comes to us from Bedford, Texas, which in case you don't know, that's in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex area. Wendy served as pastor of First Christian Disciples of Christ Church in Woodson, Texas from 2019 until last month. Wendy graduated from Bright Divinity School with a Master of Divinity she served as a peace intern during the summer of 2020 when the world flipped upside down and she took it in stride. In addition to having a Master of Divinity, Wendy also holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Biomedical Engineering with a focus on computer programming and data analytics. From the University of Texas at Austin, Wendy jokes that this was the logical precursor to seminary. <laughs> Wendy's call to ministry comes from her love of asking questions, such as, what is it that I believe and why? Having her curiosity fostered by faith, faith leaders in her life, like Megan, um, encouraged her to keep seeking answers as God walks with her. Wendy has a deep passion for fostering this exploration in others and feels that her biggest gifts lie in teaching and listening. She has a particular passion for the environment and an, is an ar ardent advocate for LGBTQIA rights as well as immigration reform. Wendy is very passionate about faith formation and supporting those she serves in their own faith journey and we can't wait to join her in that journey. We present for installation our new pastor, Wendy. Good afternoon, God's beloved. Oh, are you awake? <laughs> Good afternoon, God's beloved. Turn to your neighbor and say, hello, God's beloved. Hello, God's beloved. I bring you greetings in the name of the resurrected Christ. 
I bring you greetings in the name of the Central Rocky Mountain Region Regional Board, of which I am excited that we have three members here with us today. Your very own pastor, Melissa St. Clair, is our moderator. I invite you to stand. <laughs> Reverend Michael Stein, who is a Northern District leader. Reverend Ari Smith, who is also a Northern District leader. We are grateful for their service to the region. We are grateful for you. Megan, if I counted how many times you said together, it would be more than 50, maybe. Together, the Central Rocky Mountain region, Heart of the Rockies Christian Church, the General Church, and most of all, God has done a marvelous thing, has brought us Wendy Davison. I told her today at lunch, I said, uh, your former regional minister, Andy Magnum, said, you owe me, Joanne. <laughs> he said, I really don't want her to go. <laughs> but he is very excited for you. And so today what we do is what God has ordained. We install you, and so I invite you to come forward and let us install you, not like a washing machine or a heavy piece of equipment, <laughs> but install you into the call that God has placed on your life and on the life of Heart of the Rockies. There are different gifts, God's beloved, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. There are different ways of serving God, but it is the same God who is served. Each one of us is given a gift by the one Spirit to use for the common good. Together we are the body of Christ and individually members with one another. Individually, members with one another. I want you all to remember that. And so now, God's beloved Wendy Davison, do you accept the responsibilities of the ministry to which you have been called by the heart of the Rockies Christian Church? Will you walk humbly, love mercy, and seek justice as an ambassador of Christ? And will you serve these people and those that are unknown to us outside of these doors with an energy, intelligence, imagination, and love, relying on God's mercy and rejoicing in God's promises through Jesus Christ? If you do, please say, I will. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Will you seek Christ's presence in prayer, strengthening yourself for your work, spending ample time in study and healthy living? Will you trust the many gifts bestowed upon you and allow God and this congregation to forgive your failings Take leisure and recreation, enjoy and nurture your relationships outside the congregation, and allow them to enjoy and nurture you. Thanks be to God. Do you affirm your baptismal and ordination vows, and do you promise to give yourself to the service of God as revealed in Jesus in this church and elsewhere? And do you conduct yourself in such a manner as to reflect honor to God and Christ church? And would you please say these vows? Willingly, I affirm my baptismal vows, believing that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God. It is my desire to devote myself to the ministry of Christ's church and to bring honor to the gospel of Jesus as I preach and teach. I promise to fulfill 
to my utmost ability, the office of a good minister of Jesus Christ. Knowing that God's love is present inside these church walls and outside the church walls, I also promise to my utmost ability to reveal love in the way that I treat my friends and family. I will diligently and faithfully serve in partnership with Heart of the Rockies Christian Church as we seek the realm of God here on earth. Hallelujah. Let the church say hallelujah. hallelujah. Pastor Melissa, would you come and please join us? God's beloved Melissa, because of the relationship that exists between the ministers of the church, I call upon you to affirm, reaffirm your ordination vows and your calling as minister of Heart of the Rockies Christian Church. Will you affirm the ministry of Wendy, seeing her as a peer of equal standing within the Christian Church, Disciples of Christ? Will you help her fulfill the ministerial responsibilities to which she is called, affirming her special gifts and talents, being both mentor and friend, guide, and listener? I will. Thanks be to God. I invite the board, cabinet, elders, and staff to please stand. Will you, God's beloveds, will you affirm your calling to Heart of the Rockies Christian Church as leaders, servants, and partners on this journey? Will you remain committed to provide enthusiasm, creativity, patience, and love in the ministry of this church and be in community as you serve with others of this congregation? Say it like you mean it. <laughs> Amen. Congregation, you too are called to become part of this covenant. Will you affirm your calling into the ministry of Jesus Christ? I invite you to please stand. Will you encourage Wendy and Melissa and the leaders and staff as you follow as they guide you? Serving Jesus Christ, who alone is the head of the church. We will. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> you sound like you are ready to follow Jesus. Will you provide for their welfare, Melissa and Wendy, as they work among you, stand by in, her, in their troubles and share their joy. Listen to the words that Wendy preaches as well as Melissa. Hear as they teach, welcome their pastoral care and honor their calling. As they seek to honor and obey our Lord, will you re-educate yourselves to the gospel and give yourselves to God's renewing power? Will you place your whole selves in Christ's service that God may be glorified in this place and beyond? We will. We will also pray for our Central Rocky Mountain region and the Christian Church Disciples of Christ in the United States and Canada and for its leaders for the sake of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God be praised. God be praised. All right. At this time, I invite our elders emeriti to come forward. They are going to offer us a prayer and the laying on of hands, um, which we will invite you to do from where you are seated. Um, you may, though, wish to reach out your hand um, as a reminder of the connection that we have with one another um, because of the gift and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Most holy God, 
May we be joined together at Heart of the Rockies Christian Church on this day to share ministry which emulates the life and witness of Christ. Thank you for sending Wendy, another shepherd, to guide us. May we covenant in holy bond to love each other, to faithfully follow the guidance of your Holy Spirit. May harmony abide as we seek to nurture each other as pastor and congregation. May we witness your gifts in one another. May we grow in joy and wisdom as we venture forth serving you and praising your holy name. In the precious name of Christ Jesus, our Lord, amen. Well, Wendy, we have a few gifts to present to you today in gratitude for your presence in our midst and in celebration um, for the work that God has done in us and through us to bring us to this moment. And so these, I think your ordination will be for gifts of the office, shall we say? So consider these to be gifts for the office. <laughs> um, first, I present to you some tea, because I see how much of it you drink and you are gonna run out real soon. Um, so there is some of our equal exchange tea. I'll also show you where the key is after this, because uh, the cabinet is full of it, thanks to our equal exchange program. Um, I also present you um, with this bendable, posable Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> To remind you that ministry requires flexibility uh, and the willingness to have a little bit of fun. We also present you with a chalice and a patent and a pitcher um, that was made for you by Jessa Decker Smith, who is our unofficial potter of the region. Um, she does beautiful work, and so the Miskellis have to present to you um, a set of communion ware that we hope you can use um, throughout your ministry here and wherever God takes you. I don't know if you're going to be able to hold them all. No. There you go. Thank you. They're beautiful. I'll tell you what, I'll set them up on the table. You can take that with you if you want. <laughs> Hold on to that one. Please take these. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Good. Um, church, we also look forward to sharing on your behalf a gift with Wendy, which is the cards and the gift cards that you have been bringing over the past few weeks. Um, we'll share those with her as part of our reception, and we are grateful for all the ways um, that you have shown and will continue to show hospitality to our new pastor, Wendy. i 
There is a tradition that says when we share communion, we not only share with those who are partaking of the bread and of the cup in this room at this moment, but that we are celebrating with all those who are taking communion around the world, with all those who have taken communion throughout history, with Jesus and his disciples, with the early churches with our neighbors in different time zones who, or who, those who join us online. It is a tradition that grew ever more relevant during the pandemic, but it is one I hope we will continue to treasure. Because the welcome at this table is wide. Jesus broke bread with the one who would betray him, with those who would deny him. There is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. No matter who you are or where you've been or where you're at on life's journey, you are welcome here. And if you are worshiping at home, you are invited to partake in your own elements. This is indeed a crowded table. Thanks be to God. We remember that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is my body given for you. Do this as often as you eat of it in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples saying, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood given for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of this, all of you, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we remember our Lord's death and we proclaim his resurrection until he comes again. Let us pray. God of love, the cup of blessing that we bless is a participation in the blood of Christ. And the bread that we break is a participation in the body of Christ. God, we thank you for this communion. And we understand that this cup of wine and this bread of which we partake is not to feast on in self-indulgence, but communion is so that we may focus on our relationship with you, our Lord and Savior, and to remember your love, your advocacy, and the stand you took that monumental day when you walked humbly, loved mercy, and sought justice for the world. God, just as you provided the five loaves and two fish, and it was more than enough, when you gave yourself for us, it was more than enough. We thank you for your precious gift. Amen. Amen.
please stand as you're able and join us. may remain standing as we prepare to share in a good word for going. But first, we want to make sure that you know that you are welcome to stay because there is no way that cake is going to eat itself. Uh, and the search team has put together this fabulous theme party that even if you think you couldn't possibly eat any more today, you need to at least go take a look around at. It is really phenomenal. Um, you can take your photo with props. Uh, Sheila will be out in the lobby taking pictures today. Chris will be out in the lobby taking pictures today. Uh, and so on your way out, grab a prop, strike a pose. We have games outside, and we will have um, a presentation um, of gifts to Wendy. So thank you again for joining us on this special day. And will you join us both in a good word for going? God, be with us this week. 